John Deere is a stock market standout as the industrial sector looks poised to weather what could be a rocky 2023 for the U.S. economy. And joining me now with insights into John Deere's business is Corey Reed. He's president of production and precision ag at John Deere. Thanks so much for joining me today, Corey. Good to be with you, Allie. So what do you think it is about John Deere's business and, and what you're doing right now that is going to help it weather what could be a tumultuous year for the U.S. economy. I mean, there's there's a lot going on right now that the company is uh, innovating in, but what do you think makes it stand out right now? I think at our core, the thing that stands out for us is purpose. We serve those linked to the land. Uh, we, we provide the equipment and the technology that whether you're a farmer, uh, farming the land that provides food for the world, whether you're a contractor building roads or, or starting on a new job site to build new buildings, uh, food, fuel, fiber, infrastructure, these are core needs of a growing uh, community and, and they're what John Deere does. We provide both the tools, machines, tractors, combines, sprayers, excavators, and technology. Think of machine learning, AI-enabled machines that can go out and produce more and do it with less. So at our core, our purpose is what really helps drive us forward. And we use real technology to deliver on that purpose. How would you say technology is being applied differently uh, to the different business segments like agriculture and construction? Sure, as I mentioned, uh, first and foremost, the real purpose side of what we do, we serve farmers and we serve contractors. Farmers wake up every day thinking about how to grow the food that the world desires. And technology that's available today is far different from what they've had in the past. Historically, we were a company based on mechanizing and growing at scale the tools that they use. Think of higher horsepower tractors or bigger combines. Today, we use the most advanced technologies in the world to make those tractors and combines smarter and to make them produce more and do it with less. So whether that's as they go through the field planting, thinking about how they plant every seed better, apply only the nutrients required to make that seed pop out of the ground and grow to a healthy corn crop or a sprayer that goes through the field and is able to understand the difference between a weed and a plant. And when it can, it can reduce the amount of herbicide used on that field or a combine that uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to be able to automatically set itself to optimum settings to get the highest quality grain and the least losses. Those technologies allow our customers, the ones making the food for the world, make them better at what they do. And that's what allows us to drive our business through great purpose. So sustainability is a big buzzword right now. How does John Deere think about sustainability and how does that extend beyond efficiencies for crops and into how these machines are being powered? I mentioned our farmers' real purpose, growing the food. I mentioned real technologies, things like machine learning and AI and planters and combines and sprayers. What I didn't mention is real impact. What's the impact? First of all, it makes their quality of life better. That's incredibly important. But maybe more importantly, it allows them to grow more and to do it with less and create more sustainable outcomes. Let me give you an example. A machine goes through the field and plants a corn crop. Historically, it would use pop-up fertilizer and band it in a row. We're delivering technologies that allow you to only apply nutrients at the individual seed level. So at the farmer level, what's that mean? It means a more efficient, more effective, ultimately a more profitable crop. Grow more, do it with less inputs, and ultimately reduce the impact that it has from a sustainability perspective. Reduce the carbon intensity of every pass that goes through the field. We can do all of those things. The unique thing about our sector is we're not only serving a great purpose, we're doing it with real technology and we have the ability to have real impact. Yeah, and speaking of emissions, how is John Deere thinking about that in terms of, again, how these machines are, are powered from, from a fuel perspective, fuel efficiency, uh, battery generated or, or alternative fuel sources? We think actually all of those are gonna be required going forward. So, you know, our, our current portfolio is based on internal combustion engines and there'll be a long, a long time for internal, internal combustion engines in our sector. Why is that? The power density required for a large 8,000 series tractor, 230 kilowatt, 240 kilowatt tractor to work for 14 hours in the field. You simply can't do it with battery electric technology today, but you can use renewable fuels. And we're increasingly creating tools that can create renewable fuels like ethanol or renewable diesel that have carbon footprints the same or even less than battery electrics in the future. 
For a lot of our consumer technology or small tractor technology, we see battery electric as an incredible opportunity going forward. We're launching some of those products as we speak today. In fact, we're launching battery electric excavators. So if you're on a job site inside a community that needs quiet operation or you don't want emissions because you're in a non-attainment zone somewhere in the world, you have the opportunity to use battery electric technology for a more sustainable outcome on every work site as well. So we see it as a blending. There's no one single solution, but all of those solutions are required in order to deliver what our customers need, which is highly productive, highly efficient machines that operate in a more sustainable way. And what sort of demand are you seeing on the uh, smaller equipment front for battery powered? Is, is Does it seem like it is picking up or is it still pretty small? I would say interest is very high in battery electric overall. If you see what people have done in consumer handhelds and things that they use as tools around um, their homes, you'd see batteries in almost everything. That technology and that interest pulls over into a lot of our consumer technologies. So think about lawn mowing equipment. We just launched this year a new zero turn lawnmower that's 100% electric. So that opportunity is there. And we would see it all the way through our small, our small tractor line as well. On the consumer side of the business, someone that might use a machine two or three, four hours at a time, it makes a lot of sense to consider that technology. They don't wanna have that fuel that's required for that machine sitting in their garage. They'd like to use battery technology. As you move up into more production agriculture, it depends on the duty cycles of the machine. Our largest tractor today in tillage would take the equivalent of 38 Tesla Model 3s to run the machine for 12 hours. Well, that battery would be pretty big. It would actually be bigger than the tractor itself going through the field. So that machine needs to use diesel technology. We think the future is in things like renewable diesel. A farmer that can grow soybeans or canola uh, or even corn, where one of the byproducts of ethanol production is corn oil, can be used to go into renewable diesel production. That circular approach allows a farmer to use not only their own fuel, but also reduce their carbon footprint by a significant amount. In many cases, the same or lower than a battery electric vehicle. And going back to what you said earlier about just how you can really get so precise with the plants and separating out what's what uh, to a very, very precise degree, what all goes into that from a technology perspective? Yeah, technology is changing dramatically for us. The core technologies we're building on top of, we started almost 25 years ago. These would be technologies like uh, differential correction signals, GPS, the ability to guide machines. Most people don't know it, but when you see a John Deere tractor or a combine going through the field, it's actually driving itself already. In fact, it's been doing it for almost two decades now. Those machines are semi-autonomous, and last year we launched the first fully autonomous machine. Autonomy changes what happens on a farm because of the need for labor. The other technologies are things like computer vision systems, machine learning. All of these things come in the field of artificial intelligence. The ability to train machines, train the eyes and the brains of a machine to discern the difference between a plant and a weed. To be able to understand what a plant needs when you go through the field. Only apply the nitrogen to plants that need it. Only apply herbicide to a weed that's not wanted in the field. Plant by plant level management at scale with ease is what we're working on and we're there. The technology is real. It's available today. Farmers are using it on their farms and we're just getting started. What partners in the tech industry are you working with to really un unleash the power of this technology? Well, the incredible thing is the tech talent that's in the industry. We've had several acquisitions in the space where we've acquired technologies. Blue River Technology is one of those. Uh, they're one of the foremost experts in computer vision, machine learning in the area of agriculture, creating the spray technologies that we combine with our own sprayer sets. And this is the opportunity we have. Technology is advancing quickly. We pull that technology toward our industry. We put the experts in that technology together with the experts in agriculture. And those collisions are what create great innovation in our industry. It's what creates a great future for the agricultural industry. How is Deere using satellites or, or drones to maybe supplement what's being seen on a, on a farm or field level? We've had our own differential correction system for over 20 years, almost 25 years. We're one of five companies in the world that create correction signals to drive machines within sub-inch accuracy anywhere in the world. In fact, we're doing it in over 100 countries today. So that technology sits as a bedrock technology. We also have core communication technologies across every one of our machines. Over 500,000 deer machines today are connected. They're connect connected by 4G, LTE, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth enabled 
modems that connect every one of those machines, the jobs they're doing, the seeds they, they lay down in every field, the herbicide they spray in every field, the harvested bushels that come off of every machine, and put them into data systems that farmers can use to make better decisions about how they farm. The next time they go back to the field, they can not only farm at the acre by acre or farm level, they can get down to plant level management. Use things like machine learning and computer vision to understand exactly what a plant needs and discern the difference between a healthy plant and a weed and spray only the weed. Or discern whether a plant needs nutrients or not and only spray the plant that needs the nutrient. The opportunity for this is to grow yield, to manage the cost of the inputs they use, and to farm in a sustainable way everywhere in the world. So those are some pretty compelling innovations that we're seeing. And when we think about Deere's business today, what would you say is the going to be the biggest contributing factor to growth of the business in 2023? Well, I think accelerating the adoption of these technologies, making them usable, walk up easy for a customer to use, making them available. Whether you're buying a new machine out of our factory or you have a machine that's two or three years old, you'd like to add the technology to making it affordable so that any machine that you'd like to try it on, you have the opportunity to try and, and engage in using these technologies that can be game changing in the industry. These are the things that we're focused on, accelerating the availability and the use of these technologies across the acres that are farmed with John Deere equipment. On a corporate level, what is the biggest strategic mandate right now with the company, would you say? Our, our purpose is we run so life can leap forward. Our biggest mandate is to create value for our customers. The first mandate is to go out and understand how they farm, how they build roads, how they work their construction sites, and make sure the technologies we're deploying and the machines that we're building make them better at what they do each time they go to the field. Along with that, we think we can make them more productive. We think we can reduce their carbon footprint. We think we can make them more sustainable and more profitable. This is the, the core of what we're doing, making them better, more profitable, but also more sustainable. And Deere isn't the only player in these uh, varied endpoints, I guess you could say, but what do you think makes Deere stand out in the competitive landscape? Well, look, we have a lot of competitors in a competitive environment, and there are a lot of people that work in the agricultural space. We've been doing it a long time. We're very close to our customers. We have a unique relationship with our channel and our dealer network. The hardest thing about technology is making it work on every farm. One of our strongest competitive advantages is the network of dealers that we have out there that at the end of the day are John Deere to each and every one of our customers. Huge compelling advantage. One of the other advantages and one of the things we work on is incredible purpose. Our employees, our, the ability to come to work and know that you're working on a project that's going to change how people farm. It's going to change how food is grown around the world. This is what we all get up for. This is why we all work at John Deere. Well, you're a perfect example of the passion that we could definitely tell that you bring to your role. So thank you so much for all of your insights today. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Allie. Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.